I'm worried if like I'm too close to the road because we're quite quick. Maybe I'm gonna get hit. I don't really feel that um, comfortable. Sometimes I just get scared. It's quite like nerve wracking in a way. The roads are small, that's why I'm so nervous. Because I don't want to go too close to the road and hurt myself. I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of roads like this. I love to cycle, I love to walk, but I wouldn't be very happy riding my bike along here. There's a lot of traffic, it moves very, very fast, and there's no safe space for bicycles. I really think that everyone should be able to make safe and healthy journeys to school, to work, or on a day out. So what can we do to make our roads safer and our journeys healthier? Right, what's the number one thing that you think we could do on roads that we think are really good for making them safe places? One place for bikes and buses and one place for cars. Maybe for some of the roads for the pedestrians, they should be a bit wider, have crossings more uh, frequently. There are lots of ways that the people responsible for roads are trying to improve them. Have a look at these busy roads. What can you see that will help people walk and cycle in a safe and healthy way? But what about the cars themselves? Have you ever thought about how cars could be designed to make our journeys safer? How could new technology improve our safety, not just inside the car, but outside it too? How about a car that drives itself? You go inside, you tell it where you want to go, and a computer takes you there. Connected and autonomous vehicles and driverless cars still sound like something you'd only find in films, but maybe they're closer than you think. We're still a fair way from a world where cars don't need a driver at all, but a lot of the technology that driverless cars use is very real, and is available right now to make us safer on our streets. Full driverless cars are not for sale just yet, but you can check some of them out at the Science Museum in London. Now, you may be thinking, hang on, what is Greg on about? How can a car without a human driver be safer than a car with one? Well, as we all know, when cars crash, people can get very badly hurt or even killed. Crashes often occur because people make mistakes. The brilliant thing about driverless cars is that computers can help stop those mistakes leading to a crash. Computers don't get tired, they don't get distracted, and they don't get tempted to break the speed limit. Now, this isn't a very nice fact to hear. Every year around the world, more than 1.3 million people are killed on our roads. And what's even more shocking is that road crashes are the single biggest killer of young people. So road safety is a massive priority for the people who design and build cars. Until quite recently, when people tried to make cars safer, they mainly focused on ways to protect people inside the car if it crashed, with things like seat belts and airbags. These days though, cars are being designed to stop those crashes from happening in the first place. The newest cars have lots of clever safety technology that can do things like help drivers keep within speed limits and stop cars from drifting into the wrong lane on the motorway. I've come to a top secret location where some of this new technology is being tried out to make sure it's working properly. Now, this car is fitted with something called autonomous emergency braking, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we say AEB for short. And I'm gonna meet an expert who's gonna let me try it out. Hey, Aileen. Hi, Greg. So, AEB, tell me all about it. Well, Greg, I've got a test set up for you, so why don't I let you have a go? Sure, all right. Belts on. Raise the roll. So this car comes with AEB as standard and it will automatically stop or slow the car down if it thinks that there's going to be a crash. The slower the car's going, the less chance there is for any injury to the person. So I've heard that um, cars can communicate with each other now. That's right, so they can send each other messages or signals and they can warn each other if there's been an incident ahead of the road so they can slow down and make sure that you get 
where you're going safer. All right then, Greg, so the test is just around this corner. All right, okay, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Or the, the car will keep its sensors peeled. 20 miles an hour. <laughs> I was not expecting that. And that was the test. The vehicle noticed that the child stepped out in front of the vehicle before you did. So that's it, that's AUV in practice. Brilliant technology. The future is looking bright, but we can't yet rely on a car having some snazzy tech to keep us safe. All the cars look alike. Lots of them do have AEB, that autonomous emergency braking we've already seen, but you can't tell from looking at it whether they have it or not, which is why we need protected places like this. Spaces that we can safely walk or ride our bikes away from traffic. I think the idea of a computer driving a car is much safer. Because uh, the computer, the bot, knows what to do. It would be harder for the cars to crash um, because they have, maybe they'll have sensors and they won't be going all over the place like some drivers would. It can help them slow it down and not go through traffic lights and maybe hit someone. I think that's going to be safer.